we're not telling you what we found, but it's definitely not a lion, unfortunately, but I don't think you'll be saddened by this surprise. We have been graced by the presence of young Shongile by the looks of it. And I'm sure you'll be able to help me to confirm, but this definitely looks like little Shongile. Hello, big girl. Now, I haven't seen her brother just yet, so I'm just scanning around, making sure. Just to see if he's perhaps not hiding away somewhere, checking the tops of the trees, but we can't see him. But I'm very happy that we found her, and she looks, she looks well. She's got a decent sized belly. It's not massive. And she looks very, very, very hot. Now, I need to jump on the game drive radio. Just to quickly let everybody know. No, they're talking, so we will, we'll try again in a moment. You can see her panting very, very quickly, trying to cool herself down. Now, it's quite interesting that we've been seeing Shongile and Hosanna all on their own, and Karula's been out doing all sorts of wonderful things. But I'm really not worried about these two. I think that they will be fine. I, I've seen it before where mothers have sort of become, or let their cubs become independent at a much younger age. I hope you're all going to send a few in. Remember, you can send a couple of screenshots of beautiful Shongile if you'd like. Remember, hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, or you can send them through to questions at wildearth.tv. Now, she hasn't done much. She hasn't really repositioned. We just moved around a little bit to try a different angle. And... Earlier we heard some squirrels alarming. You see how she keeps staring off in the direction of the sun, so west. Now there were squirrels alarm calling. Now I wonder if it's maybe Hosanna, maybe it's Karula coming back. I'm not 100% sure, but we're just sitting and waiting. But something has definitely caught her attention. Because for the last five minutes her main focus was over her shoulder and looking, like I said, in the, into the direction of the sun. So we will see. Maybe we hear some contact calls. Or maybe she gets up and she goes for a drink. Isn't this lovely though? And I'm so impressed as to how far this leopard has come. And how relaxed she is now with the vehicles. So that's very important because it's always quite difficult when you're trying the habituation process with leopards. It takes a lot longer than what it does with lions. Lions are so relaxed, a, a 10 day old cub would, if it could, would walk straight towards your vehicle with absolutely no fear. But a leopard can be a little bit more, oh, big yawn, look at your big teeth coming through now. But a leopard cub can take a little bit longer and can be a little bit more on the shy side. But she's relaxed, we repositioned and she sort of watched us, but she didn't twitch an ear, she didn't do anything, she didn't panic, and that's important. And that's all that's based on genetics. Not not every leopard will be relaxed. Sometimes if the mother or father are quite skittish, you can often see that trait coming through. Look at her beautiful pattern. All those ros rosettes forming very nicely now. And something that VM and I were looking at, and hopefully she's going to turn her head to look at us again. She's got the most beautiful pattern on her head. It almost looks like she's got a W, a very small one between her eyes, but we'll have a look and you guys can decide if she does stare at us again. Actually, I'm, I took a photo. Should we should we have a look on the camera? Let's, let's do that. Now I'm going to try and angle it so you can see the leopard here. I'm going to zoom in now. Now we've got a doo doo doo. Can you see that between her eyes? What do you think? Do you think you can see a little W pattern there, it almost looks like two, like you've got one and then another small one underneath. Isn't that incredible? Now Michael, you are actually wondering about how you can tell the difference between leopards. Now you can look at their spot pattern. So above their whiskers, let's see if we can see one of hers. Now if you look very carefully on the left hand side of her face you can actually see, can you see that there's two very small dots, tiny little black ones quite close to her nose. I would count them because those are spots, they're going to be there her whole life. And then she's got the three big ones. 
but I'm not exactly sure what the official spot pattern for this leopard is. Um, I, like I said, there's a couple of times I've seen it where there's been a very small freckle and it hasn't been counted in, which I find bizarre. So maybe you can let me know what her official spot pattern is. I think on, the, on her right side of her face, I think I counted four spots, if I'm not mistaken, four or three spots. But that's one of the easier ways and, and one of the things that they do, all the leopard projects like Panthera, in order to try, of course, and monitor these leopards. But then you look for unique markings, scars, nicks in the ear. Like my favorite is Tingana on his left shoulder. He has his little rosettes and spots that make out a smiley face. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. And you can look for things like that. But that takes lots of patience and constantly looking on the animals to see if you can find a find a nice shape that sort of makes sense of something. But she's strikingly beautiful. I mean, you see her and she's just like her mother. I think she's more beautiful than Karula, though. She's going to be a beautiful girl. And I wonder if she's going to be bigger than her mother. Viam and I were actually just chatting about that. Hopefully she will be a nice big girl. Look at those paws, they're growing well, they're getting bigger and bigger by the day. And something else that I noticed is, as you see on her nose, how that pink is starting to fade. Look how it's com almost completely disappeared. It's just a sort of a lightish color in the middle of her nose now. Hey, big girl, you're growing up way too quickly. It feels like just yesterday when I saw them and they were so much younger and so much smaller. Now, you're probably wondering where on earth we get some of these names from. Now, Tim, in fact, was wondering that, who names these animals. Now, Tim, it's normally a sort of a, a discussion, of course, that has to get um, sort of go out with the different lodges, and, and normally they'll try and use local names, normally to describe personalities and things like that. And um, we have these big meetings, and then official names are announced which will then go through to Panthera, 